guys first met each other? Back back it was only like the, through Todd Harris, one of them. Yeah, it was through Todd Harris. Did you write the family thing or something like mm -hmm. that? Yeah, we were, uh, I t well, when I, when I signed, well, not signed, but I was with an agency called Triad. Mm -hmm. uh, Triad was bought by William Morris, and so all of a sudden I was at William Morris. And when I first had my, uh, my first meeting over there, uh, I told him, I said, I only want a couple of things out of you, and one of them is I want to meet Robert Duvall. And uh, if you do that, you don't have to do anything else for me. Well, they, they got it to where, you know, I could. Yeah, and they said, that, well, Billy and his party want to maybe write something for you. That's so right. I said, well, yeah, yeah, why not? And I, what was the movie? We can't think of the name. <clears throat> where you had the wife for a year? Who was it? Remember? What was that? Paxton. Um, With Paxton. Oh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, One False Move. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> one False Move. Yeah, and Bobby had seen that. Yeah, I liked, liked that. I liked that. Yeah, it was nice. And he said, um, when I first met Bobby, he had a he was doing this movie called uh, The Stars Fell on Henrietta, oh, that's, which was yeah. a, a, down in Abilene, Texas. Yeah. It was about oil men in the 30s. Yeah. And uh, the director was a guy named James Keach, and they brought me in to read read for the part, and I got the part. It was uh, Bobby and Aidan Quinn, Francis Fisher, Fisher, Brian Dennehy, and me, and a bunch of bunch of, <laughs> bunch of rattlesnakes. Exactly. Yeah. The first scene I ever did with him. In the movie, he had a cat, and it was like his, you know, it was his kid almost. It was like his pride yeah, and joy. Yeah. And a cat would sniff for, for oil. <clears throat> but it had like eight cats. One would walk, one would follow you, one would jump on your shoulder. Each cat did something different, you know, but they had like eight of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it, so you never knew, never knew what was going to happen with them. But he had this one cat, and there's a scene where he's in this sort of little shed, and he's talking to his cat because the cat's sick and looks like it might be dying. So he's like petting the cat. He's talking to the cat. Well, Aiden Quinn and I come into the shack, and we're supposed to, after a, a couple of minutes of him talking to this cat, one or the other of us had a line, and we're supposed to go take him away from the cat and say, you know, we'll take care of the cat. Don't worry. You're just going out here or whatever. Well, Aiden and I just kept standing there, standing there, watching and everything. And then the director cut, and he said, where are you guys? You're supposed to come up and take him away and we said oh sorry you know and we went outside me and Aiden and uh, uh, Aiden said uh, what happened to you in there is the same thing happened to me I said all I was thinking was I'm in a scene with Robert Duvall I was just I, I, I wasn't in, I was I wasn't in the scene I was just you know I was sitting here watching Bobby do this thing and I'm I, the whole all I could think of was just I'm in a movie with Robert Duvall I'm sitting here and I was just listening to him Totally forgot I was in the movie. Aiden said the same thing. And uh, so we had to, you know, go back in and do it again where we could go and do what we're supposed to do. But um, that was uh, that was my first experience. Remember the time we went for lunch? Oh, yeah. We went for two hamburgers. That's we right. One side of town, one for the other side to have another well, hamburger well, so he, to test he, them out. Bobby heard about a, the best hamburger in Abilene. <laughs> right. And uh, we went over there and had it. We didn't like it. <laughs> and so he said, well, we got to go find it. There's supposed to be a place here that's got a great hamburger. So we were out in the parking lot, and there was a guy with a FedEx truck or a UPS truck or something. Well, he went and asked the guy. He said, where's the best hamburger in right. town? And the guy said, oh, it's over here at this little place. And it was one of those old drive-ins, like a Dairy Queen or something, but it was a family-owned thing. And we went over there, and we liked that hamburger. That was better. Well, we yeah. had two lunches. And then we used to go down to the Perini Steak Ranch in Buffalo Gap. Oh, oh man, yeah. good food down best, there. Best, best yeah. steak. And then it, my only went down and cooked pasta one night, mm -hmm. a makeup man from Italy, while they cooked the meat. It was, oh, what a, what a feast. Oh, it's yeah, great. it's amazing. Then there were two Iranian brothers that, would get, when they got out of the Air Force, they settled right there in Albany, Texas, and they have a restaurant where they compete with cooking lamb. And they have a great lamb there, so it's good, good barbecue all around there. Oh yeah. Yeah, we, we had a great time. I, I loved Abilene. It's not that it's not so pretty there, but I like going back to visit. I like yeah, it. We had the best time there. Yeah. And then the second half wasn't bad. Austin was pretty good. Oh yeah, too. Austin was good too. We, nice. we love Austin. Good barbecue there too. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the way things finally came together uh, was. Uh, Bobby asked me when because we were Tom Epperson and I were going to write something for him. And um, he said, uh, I want to play a black man in a movie. Yeah, I don't know why. Though, and I, and part I, black. And I said, right. And I said, I said, well, that's kind of a tall order, but we'll try. Yeah, he, he was going to say, that's what I'm doing. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And uh, so we came up with this story, and it became a family thing with uh, Bobby and James Earl Jones and 
Uh, Richard Pierce directed it. Yeah, it was and, nice. Uh, we shot it in Chicago nice and yeah. Memphis. That's right. But Chicago, believe it or not, was hotter than Memphis. Oh, yeah. And all the people that died there. It was, both cities were hot. But they were nice. I enjoyed both both places. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It was a good bunch. And, and, yeah, and we thought we made a real good movie. You know, they, they didn't push the movie that much. It didn't do very well at the box office, but it was, we were all real satisfied yeah, with it. It was, it was a was really nice. nice little movie. And, uh, and while they were in Memphis shooting um, the family thing, we were in Arkansas shooting Sling Blade. Oh, so when uh, I came over. And Bobby came over to do his part. And uh, so, you know, he was, you know, working on another movie. And, I, and I'd ask him, I said, will you play my father in Sling Blade? And he said, yeah, I'll come down and do it. So uh, he had a, uh, this driver brought him down in a town car or whatever it was. You know, they drove down. And he was just going to come for a couple hours and do his thing and go back to Memphis. You ended up spending the night, though. Did I? Yeah, you stayed at the Ramada Inn. But, uh, oh, with Barry. And with Barry and all yeah, of them, yeah. yeah. But um, anyhow, he came down, and I had given the crew a big lecture. And uh, on my set, I'm, uh, one of my main rules is nobody yells at anybody. Everybody's relaxed and stuff like that. So I told everybody, I said, listen, I said, here's the thing. This, is, this guy is my hero as an actor. He's, this is the guy that made me want to be an actor. And I said, when he's here, when I'm shooting his close-up and stuff, I don't want you to make any noise. <laughs> and, uh, Not that they would anyway. I said, right, right. <laughs> oh, that bunch would. But uh, so I said, y'all, y'all be quiet and don't be talking to each other and, you know, whatever. And uh, they got down there and we shot my part of the thing and then we're shooting Bobby in the chair and he was doing all this stuff. He, I mean, I only wrote a couple of lines we never, we, we never did rehearse. We never did. You just roll the camera, and all oh, of a yeah, sudden he comes out of the shadows. That's right. <laughs> we just kind of did the scene. <laughs> it kind of worked nice, you know. Oh yeah, we don't. We're not big on rehearsing. Well, we didn't rehearse on the Apostle either. No. When we did our no, stuff, no, we, not much. Know? No, no. And because uh, we, you know, you figure, you know, if you rehearse it too much, you know it too well, and you want it to be. You can always do it again anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Take two, three. Four. That's right. And uh, Kubrick, take eighty-nine. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> So I come in there and I'm doing my off-camera lines for, for Bobby and, and uh, we're shooting the thing. And right in the middle of his, I don't know if his first or second take or something, you know, we didn't do two or three takes. But right in the middle of one of the takes, all of a sudden somebody started a car up right in the front yard. And I went out of my mind. I kicked a sandbag. Oh, I remember that. He, and, he threw a little tantrum. Oh, oh I did. I, th- I did a throw a tantrum. tantrum there. I did throw a tantrum. A fit, we call it. <laughs> Jimmy Conner calls it a fit. Right. <laughs> and, I went nuts. I kicked a sandbag. I started yelling at all the PAs and the, uh, uh, the uh, ADs and everybody else. And you broke your own rule. No? Broke my own rule. Started no, yelling on the set. Well, it turns out the guy that started the car was his driver. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> now, when are you going to work with him again? Well, we talk about it every now and then. I guess you know, yeah, just you never know. Sometimes when you plan things, they don't happen. Some comes from around the corner and surprises you. Can be better than what you'd planned. Yeah. You know, like some drag, oh, will you do this? Oh, that's just great, you know. So you never know, something might happen. Why yeah. not?